Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. And today we're going to continue our story of Jesus at the Feast of Tabernacles in John 7. And if you remember, this is an eight-day celebration. For seven days they would take water from the Pool of Siloam and pour it out at the altar in the temple as a reminder of how God had provided water for the people in the desert. And everybody would stay in their tents or booths, and that was a reminder of how they lived in the wilderness for 40 years. And then on the eighth day, they wouldn't bring any water, and everybody would come out of their tents as a reminder of coming into the promised land. This whole time there was a debate about Jesus and who he was, and people said, he's the Messiah. And others said, no, he can't be. We're going to talk about that on Something Deeper. So halfway through this Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus shows up and begins teaching. And the crowd is divided. It's the controversy of the day. Many of the people are saying, how can this man, without a rabbi's education, how can he teach so well? How does he know so much? Why are his teaching so powerful? He must be the Messiah. And others rejected him. And many of them rejected him for totally false reasons. Some people said, well, when the Messiah comes, we won't know where he is coming from. And we know where Jesus is from, Galilee. Both of those assumptions, both of those ideas are false. So not only is their conclusion false, but their presumptions are false. Number one, the Bible tells specifically where the Messiah would come from. He'd come from the line of David and be born in Bethlehem. So they were wrong about that nobody would know where the Messiah came from. But they were also wrong that he came from Galilee. There were some people that read one passage of scripture that said the Messiah would appear at the temple to suggest that that the Messiah would appear out of nowhere. But the Bible specifically says he will come from Galilee. Life in the city. So, as we go on, they're rejecting him for reasons that are just totally bogus. I've met people like that in my life. I met somebody at a Christmas party who said he didn't believe the Bible because it had been retranslated so many times. I didn't understand what he was suggesting because it was totally not true, but I realized later he was suggesting that it was translated from Hebrew and Greek into Latin to Old English to all French and German and and each translation would have gotten worse like a bad copy machine when that's absolutely not how translations work I I recent I was reminded that recently by somebody on uh, a YouTube who had a, a very similar reason for rejecting the Bible he said you know the the King James Version was the 15th iteration meaning the 15th copy of the originals Every translation today, the NIV, New American Standard, they're very accurate because they go back to the earliest manuscripts. And since the King James was translated, we have tremendously more manuscripts to go from and older manuscripts. And so as time goes on, translations don't get less accurate. They actually get more and more accurate to the original manuscripts. So, totally bogus reasons lead to a bogus conclusion. And these people said, oh, we'll never know where the Messiah is coming from. And we know Jesus is from Galilee, so how could that be? Jesus answered, yes, you know me and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own authority, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him because I am from him and he sent me. And they decided they're go- they got to arrest him. The leaders were ready to kill him. But the crowd believed in him. They said, Where, or when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? So the people heard the crowd and they were whispering. And, and so they sent people to arrest Jesus. And Jesus mentioned he was only going to be with them for a short time. And then you won't be able to find me. Mentioning he was going to die, be resurrected and go back to his father. But a lot of the crowd didn't understand either. But then down in verse 37, 
On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing these words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others asked, How can the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. So here, these people were more informed. They knew that the Messiah was coming from Bethlehem, but they were still wrong about where Jesus came from. You know, if you don't dig deep enough, you might have enough information just to be dangerous. It's easy to have a superficial knowledge of something and reject it. Sometimes it doesn't matter much, but if you're talking about the most famous, most impactful person in the universe, in all of human history, who said, I am the Son of God and the Savior of the world, is there really a good reason not to be careful about deciding who he really is and what you really believe about him? The story goes on, verse 45. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards replied. You mean he has deceived you also, the Pharisees retorted? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? No, but this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a curse on them. Here's another logical fallacy. Uh, just the argument from authority. Well, all the re religious leaders reject Jesus. None of them believe in him. It's these uneducated people. You know, it, it doesn't matter if, if the experts believe it or not. What matters is, is it the truth? And right after they said, have, have any of our leaders gone after him? Verse 50, Nicodemus, coincidentally one of the leaders, Nicodemus, who had gone to, Ju to Jesus earlier and who was one of their own number, asked, Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it, and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. They were right in their assumptions, but they were wrong about Jesus. Let's not be satisfied with a superficial knowledge of the most important person in history. It's worth it to find out if, he's, if he is who he says he is, because that changes everything. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful story, the reminder of the importance of really carefully seeking you. Father, I know we'd, you never promised you would be found by us by accident, but only if we seek you with all our heart. We seek you with all our heart, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you tomorrow night, Lord willing.